before it's too late. Once the Jenners have finished working with the Earthwatch volunteers, Mission Kurt will move on to the season's final stage of research. They will meet up with a scientist from Curtin University who will be conducting seismic experiments to see how the whales react. Almost as a precursor to that, as whale song sailed by Cockatoo Island, the boat mysteriously started to shudder and the islands around them erupted into pillars of dust. Movement on the Picaninnies is moving all the way back to Coolin, Nevis of Coolin. That's incredible. That must have been an earthquake. Well, we'll have to we'll have to listen to the radio and see what it was. It was an earthquake, Australia's second biggest, measuring 6.2 on the Richter scale. The whales have now moved out of the calving and mating ground and are on their way back towards their summer feeding grounds. Back to where for the next six months they will gorge themselves on krill. It will have been many months since cows like Big Mama will have had a good feed. These stretch marks show they will have used up much of their stored resources in their blubber when making the journey to the calving grounds, then feeding and nurturing their young ones. The bulls, too, will be feeling more than a little peckish. Now the whales seem to be of one mind, to make the journey south as quickly as possible. But it's a long, hard journey. And as much as Big Mama and the other mothers may want to race south, they have to pace themselves. Otherwise, the young ones won't be able to keep up. But all the lessons learned back in the Kimberley have paid off. The calves keep close to mother, using her slipstream to pull themselves along. But the calves will need a rest soon. After travelling non-stop for several days and nights, the whales reach the Gulf of Exmouth, where the humpbacks will take time out. It's in the Gulf that the whales will be the subject of a series of scientific experiments. Like many marine environments around the world, this part of the Indian Ocean off Western Australia is a treasure trove of natural resources, which means the whales have to coexist with, amongst others, the oil and gas industry. The oil industry operates by and largely in a fairly benign way for the whales. The only thing that uh, could possibly bother them, and we weren't sure exactly to what extent it would bother them, is the actual uh, sampling the bottom to find out where the oil reserves are. The exploration for oil and gas is carried out by ships which tow seismic testing equipment, which set off explosive air charges underwater. The noise, which is repeated every 10 seconds, is equivalent to the loudest noise a humpback can make. And the Jenners are concerned this could impact on the great whales. So in 1996, the Petroleum Exploration Production Association commissioned scientist Rob McCauley of Curtin University to conduct a three-year study into the effects of seismic surveying on marine life. Uh, my field of expertise is underwater acoustics, biological underwater acoustics, and I, I can't do everything, so I get what I consider the best people with the information on the animal, the biological information. And the best people in this case are the Jennies. And Macaulay commissioned the Centre for Whale Research to help him carry out his study. The Jennies biggest fear is that the noise created by the exploration could disrupt the whale's communications. As we know, this communication is through the whale's songs. The Jenners believe that these songs have many purposes. One song is for attracting a mate. Another may be, as we saw, to soothe the pain or discomfort of another whale. Another song is for navigation. 
as a direction beacon to show the way along the humpback highway to the rest of the migrating colony. So with this in mind, the experiments are aimed at observing the whale's reaction to underwater noise. This is done by the underwater discharge of compressed air, similar in intensity to that used by exploration ships surveying the ocean floor. The whale song's job is first to locate a pod of whales. Can we go a little bit more to starboard, starboard please? Then for an hour they log every movement of the pod. Every minute detail is recorded. Surface blow car. Once they have established a pattern of normal behaviour for the pod, Macaulay will begin his experiments. Yeah, very good. The air gun is lowered overboard and the experiments begin. <laughs> 